Hey y'all, do you like to catch crappie in shallow water? Well, stay with me because in this video, that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do. Alright y'all, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change baits here. I, I had a subscriber send me some hand-tied jigs and let me tell you what, they are fantastic. So I'm going to put one of those on. Let me see if I can find one here that looks good. A little black chartreuse with some multicolored mylar or little rubber tails in there too. Man, that thing is going to get them. Thank you, George, for that. I sure appreciate it. And also, I'm going to show you this little knot. I uh, had another guy, Michael Gentry, I believe that's his name, was wanting me to just kind of slow down on how I tie this knot. Um, it's just a simple little loop knot. I just double the line, you know, put it through the eye like that. And then I'm just going to fold it like this to where it doubles it up. I'm going to run it through once and through again. And I'm going to cinch it up right there. And that's the knot I use. I've used that, I've used that knot all my life. I don't know that there's, I mean, I know there's different ways of tying them. That's the only way I know how. So, works for me. And this little tool, again, that's that little tool, that little Tie Pro tool, if you hadn't looked, seen it in my videos before. It'll really help you. If you can't see good, it'll help you get your bait lined up good in there. There's one. I got him. I got him, guys. He's in that shallow water. Look at that, just barely got him too, right there in the top of the mouth. Barely got him skinned hooked. Little male. Let's see. One thing that I want to stress to you guys is that at the beginning, when these fish first move up, they'll get right up on the bank. The water's warmer next to the bank than it is out from it. So if your surface temperature, like it is here, is 59, it's gonna be warmer up close to the bank. There's another, oh, that was a good one right there. Golly, bro. That was a good female. Golly. The water's gonna be warmer right up next to the bank. And I, I don't have a foot of line out. That was a big female I just lost. As you can see, the boats drifted up on top of it. I caught that first one. There's one right there. There's another good one. Oh, God, oh, let me fell off. There we go. Another good male. Get him back in there. I want you to look. It's right here. I've got a foot of line out. I'm going right down by the boat right here. The boat sitting on top of the of the fish, basically. Right up next to the bank. There's another one. Look at that, guys. I mean, look how many get in a spot. And it's fast and furious. And see, you don't even have to have a boat to do this. You can walk along the shoreline, just dab that jig around and anything you see, any kind of weeds and vines like this right here, lay downs, anything like that, and you can catch a mess quick. Let's see if there's another one in there. There's three out of that one spot. Boat's a little, I don't like it to be right on top of it like that. But as long as you're quiet, look at there. Oh, there he went. That was four. I lost him. There's five. Well, y'all, that's one bad downfall about fishing like this with a long pole. I got that good looking jig hung up in that tree right there. Set the hook too hard and hang up in the dark wood i got it lucky 
Okay, there's been five, six bites in that one hole. Let's see if there's any more down in there. There's seven. <sighs> Come on, if I can get him. That's, with this long pole, you gotta really draw your line, you know, you gotta, you gotta back up with it to, to get them in. Let's see here. That's seven bites in that one little hole there. I have sat in one place like this and caught 75 keepers in just hour, two hours, you know, something like that. So when you catch one, you remember that there's more down in there. They're not, at this time of year, during the spring, there's usually a bunch of them together. Look at that. That's eight. Eight out of one hole so far. Eight bites. I ain't landed all of them. I'm getting too close to it now. There's no one. Oh, God, please. Get him out of there. <laughs> Shoot, man. He didn't put much of a fight up after I hung him. He just kind of hung around. Let's get him back. They're just right there, man. Right there, shallow. You know, when these things make their nest, they, they get in really, really tight groups. Can't keep my boat from getting up there. There's another one. I moved over about, uh oh. I moved over about, I don't know, five or six feet. I don't know, and you think that thing didn't want it? Golly, look how far he's got it in there. Can't stand it. I gotta get it back down in here, right by the boat. Oh, there he is. There he is. Good one, boy. <laughs> right by the boat. <laughs> as soon as you put it in the water. Oh, shoot. Where's my bang pliers at? Them old jigs George made me, boy, are catching them. See that, guys? It was right beside the boat right here, look. There you <laughs> oh my gosh, man. Somebody don't like this, boy. Something's the matter with them. Got a little puff of wind. Blew me off of there. Good. Ain't that lucky? Oh, golly, boom. He knocked this knot out of it. There he is. <laughs> oh, shoot. I tell you what, guys. If you ain't crappie fishing in the spring. You missing out for sure. I've almost got my limit out of this hole right here. And I hadn't fished it 15 minutes. One thing I will caution you about if you 
get out doing anything like this in an area that looks similar with these trees overhanging. Lots of snakes. I saw five, five snakes in one little old stretch a couple days ago. And the wasps will start making nests in them too. Oh, I had one. I thought I was on a log. Thought I was on a stick and I had a fish. I was too busy looking for snakes. There he is. He come back on it. crappie that's getting his black war paint on him. Oh, one bumped it. There's another one. <clears throat> Look how he's got that all painted up. See, some people catch them in the springtime like this and think they're catching black crappie because of the colors of them. That's actually a, a male white crappie that's getting all this. He's getting all colored up trying to attract him a girlfriend. Yeah. This is my favorite. This and watching the bobber go down is my favorite, favorite way to catch them. Leave a comment in the comment section of how you guys like to catch them. I'd like to see how everybody's favorite, you know, different ways in different places around the country. People catch them different ways. I like to see how they do it, what they like to do, what their colors are. So comment that stuff down in the comments if you would. Either there's not as many in this little spot or they're not biting as well as they were. There's another one. Ooh, there's a good one right there. Look at that. Look at that. That's being aggressive, isn't it? I mean, golly, he's already got it back to his crushers back there. There we go, we got it. That's a good looking fish. Good looking bait too, I'll tell you what. Look at that. Old George told me my baits were ugly. So he sent me a couple of pretty ones. I sure appreciate it too, buddy. Oh shoot, I knew I was gonna do that again. Throw it in a darn tree. And that's on a briar vine too. I'll have to get in there and untangle that. Fell right off right as I... All I'm doing is keeping that jig just right off the bottom. Look at this. And I'm telling you what, they smack it. When you find them, you can really bust them fast. Oh, missed another one. One of the hardest things is not getting in a hurry and wanting to set the hook too hard in this brush because you can definitely stay tangled up in the trees. And when they hit it hard, it's hard not to yank fast. There he is. And we plucking them out of here quick. Another nice fish. I tell you what, that jig, woo! Lordy, it's good. Now these fish aren't hitting this bait because they're hungry. They're defending the nest. They got in here and built the nest for these crappie, to, these female crappie to come in here and lay in. And they're just hitting it out of aggression. And look, I mean, I don't have a foot of line out. I don't know if you can see it down there, but look how many fish are living in that little bitty spot. Oh, golly bumming, I knew I'd do that again. Shoot. There we go. Thank you, Jesus. There he is. Another good one. Be still. 
Now, if you notice, most of these I've caught today have been males. Most females are here, though. They were in here yesterday. I don't know. They, they're they in and out. They don't stay around very long. But there'll be more coming in in the next few days. There'll be more coming in in the next month, for that matter. There he is. There he is. Hey, that's a better one. Oh, there he went. And there goes my jig in the tree. A lot of crappie live up in this shallow stuff. Uh oh. There we go. Another. Another good one. Well, we'll let this spot rest now. Let's see what's over here. Make sure there ain't no snakes. God, we bump shoot. That gun. This is going to be a challenging little spot right here. Here he is. I saw him come up and get it. I could see my jig down there in the water. Watched him come in there and eat it. Be still. There he is. That's a good one. I saw him come get it too. This water is a little clearer right here in this pocket and I can see. Uh oh, quick release on that one. I can see the fish come up and hit the jig. I had to squat down a little bit so I could get it underneath them limbs. And he come out there and snatched it. I hope there's a few things that you learned watching this video. Um, first thing I want to tell you is it's March the 13th. They do move up prior to March the 13th shallow, but from my experience, especially on Lake Fork, after the 15th of March is always better fishing shallow. They will come up, but they seems like we'll get a front here and there and it'll back them off and then you'll go a couple of days without catching them. But after the 15th of March, typically they're up there and they stay and more are coming in. And, and from, I'm gonna say from the 15th of March to the 15th to the 20th of April seems to be the prime spawn in our area. So anywhere in the South that I would say, if you're watching this in Tennessee or Georgia or wherever, if you're about the same temperatures that we are, I would say that's the time that you need to be looking for them shallow. Remember, the, when this when it's been cold and the water starts to warm up, around the bank, close to the bank, is the warmest water. So the surface temp out here in 10 feet may be 59, but a foot down under the water, it's still cold. Up around the banks is gonna be warmer. So at the beginning of the spawn, the fish will get shallower. They'll spawn shallower at the beginning of the spawn. And then as the water warms, as the year progresses, then it'll warm out a little bit and they'll start spawning in deeper water. It just seems like always initially right up next to the bank, especially in dingy colored water. If it's a little clear water, what I t tend to do is just look for when you can't see the bottom, wherever you stop seeing the bottom, right in that area right there. I mean, if you were paying attention, I only had a foot of line out and I was right up next to the bank catching them. So definitely do that. Also, um, colors don't really matter. Uh, the darker water, I'll use a black and chartreuse. Uh, I had a pink head or orange head on there. I think any, any color will work as long as they're, it's visible enough in the water clarity. I've used whites before in real dark water and still catch them. So I, I think it's a, it's a matter of getting it in front of them. When you find that nest of crappie, there's a bunch in there. So if you catch one, nine times out of 10, there's a bunch more, especially at the first of the season like this, going into the spring, when they're start to spawn, because they're in their garden and nest, they're not there just hanging out. So um, always be looking for that. And if you catch several and they quit biting, move around, find you another little spot, and then come back to that spot because they'll turn back on again in there. Um, one, one thing I would say too, is if you're gonna fish multiple days in a row, um, don't catch all of them. I know that's hard. <laughs> hard to do but don't catch all of them out of one spot leave some there if you leave them there there'll be more crappie there the next day they'll replenish a whole lot faster if you pluck all of them out of there it's usually it's liable to take a week before 
it, it replenishes. So that's another tip. It's something that with brush piles, I've never understood. If you if you catch every fish out of a brush pile, it's liable to take you a week to catch them again. If you just catch five or six or eight out of a brush pile and there, you know, and leave some more in there, others will funnel in there and be there for you tomorrow and the next day. So that's another another thing. Like I said, the, the water temperature was 59 degrees. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be 60, but it's right there in that 60 degree range. And uh, the fish are up shallow. I would get out and catch them. This is my favorite time to catch them. Hopefully on the next video, I'm going to be catching them on a slip cork. If the weather doesn't mess that up, that's the plan. But if it does, well, I'll be catching them however I can. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up. I'd appreciate your support and subscribe and hey hit that little notification bell it'll let you know of all the different videos that i put out and there may be something in there that you can learn a little bit from help you catch more fish so uh, we'll see you on the next one thanks for joining me